Hey guys, welcome back. Just wanted to do a real quick video today uh, on an unboxing. I, for a while I've been wanting to take one of my Les Pauls and put some kind of a tremolo system on it. Um, but I just don't get along well with Floyd Roses and the Big Bees. A lot of times you have to alter your guitar or they're just too big and bulky. So after doing a lot of research, I found this, uh, that Duesenberg makes one called the, I believe it's called the Le Trem, and it supposedly allows you to just place it where the existing bolts are for the existing bridge and give you um, a reasonable tremolo system for your Les Paul. So we are going to unbox it and install it today and see what it looks like and see if this might be a viable option for any of you that might be interested as well. I did some a little bit of research looking into a few different options. There was one I think was called like a Stets bar or something of that nature. Uh, but that one was a little bit bulkier and didn't have as good a review, so we will see how this one goes. Uh, I saw a video that Pete uh, from Anderton's uh, did this to one of his Les Pauls and said that he liked it, so that's a pretty good uh, uh, endorsement there. So here is the information here. Looks pretty straightforward. And so here's what comes in the box. Uh, we've got a set of Imperial and metric bolts it said on the website and some washers. And then this is the trim system here. Obviously you've got gold since my hardware is gold. It's not going to match exactly because this guitar is God, probably 30 years old now. Um, so it's got a lot of worn gold and this is obviously brand new gold and fortunately I couldn't really find a good aged one. But this is not, you know, it's, it's an Epiphone Les Paul, not a Gibson um, and it's not really worth a whole lot of money so I don't mind too much, you know, if it's not perfect. I don't mind experimenting with this guitar. So that is what we are going to do. And hopefully there's a bar in here. Yeah, there we go. The bar. Interesting um, bar I was looking online. It, it has a through hole and there's an adjustment pin on each side. And so it allows you to actually adjust the length of the bar slightly where you can have it all the way in like this or you can pull it up a little bit farther like that. Uh, so you, get, you have about a I don't know, an inch, inch and a half or so of, of leeway for how long you want the bar to be. Um, that's just going to sit right on there like that. Now, these do, they say they do work with the normal uh, ABR or Nashville bridges that Gibson uses on most of theirs. But I also saw a lot of people saying that uh, because uh, the bridges that come with Gibsons normally, you know, they've got these points on them. The strings don't necessarily slide back and forth real easily uh, as you would with a trem. And also because the, you know, the, the way that the strings are on Gibsons and, and Epiphones where they don't go through the, the nut straight, there's, there's a little bit of an angle, the strings can bind up sometimes. So it was recommended to use a roller bridge um, instead of the existing one. I'm going to try it both ways just to see which way works best, but uh, I got this Schaller bridge online, and it's got like the standard pins and everything, and this supposedly will just sit right on here, and this will allow the strings to kind of slide back and forth a little bit easier when you're doing bends. So pretty straightforward. Uh, it's going to alter the look a little bit, because obviously this bridge is a little wider than the existing bridge that came with it. But we're going to try it both ways. Um, this is a Schaller made in Germany. And we'll try it with both the existing bridge first and then with the roller bridge. And we'll kind of see if it makes a big difference or not. But anyway, uh, let me cut to... Uh, I'm going to get this all put on the guitar. And then I'll come back and we'll kind of see what it looks like. Um, and if it's a good fit for you. Okay, so we got an update here. Uh, unfortunately, the pins that came with the Schaller bridge don't fit um, in the Epiphone uh, holes. The, I guess the old Epiphones, like this one, uh, use a slightly different size than the modern ones do. So I'm going to have to take that to a luthier and see if he can uh, put an adapter in or 
pull the plugs out and put uh, the Schaller ones in there for me instead. But I was able to get the bridge on at least, and uh, it's really smooth. The, the tension bar here has really nice uh, resistance to it, but not too much. And if you kind of see down at the end here, uh, when you pull the the bar down, it does not touch the body. There's a there's a small gap there, and there's a little felt bumper anyway, even if it did go down. But you can see it's real rigid, and it's got a fair amount of movement for bends. However, one thing I did notice, just so you're aware, uh, it only goes down. It doesn't go back up. There's there's no movement once it hits the. It's, it's almost like a like an EVH Floyd Rose if you've ever seen those. Like they're decked, so. It's, it doesn't pull back, it just goes down. Uh, but that's fine, because usually to go up, most of the time I just bend the strings anyway. Um, I only really need the tremolo to uh, go down. Any, so that should work out fine. Uh, so anyway, it's super simple. Don't have to drill any holes. It goes on real nice. Um, I'm going to cut the video here until I can get the guitar over to my luthier and get the other bridge put on and then uh, we'll string it up and give it a try okay guys so it's been a couple of days and got some good news so as you can see we have the roller bridge in now uh, you may notice this is not the Schaller roller bridge that was in the uh, first part of the video um, I was going to have to have the pins replaced in order to make that one fit, but my luthier uh, knew of some roller bridges that are specifically made for uh, the Epiphone Les Pauls and Gibson Les Pauls uh, that did use the same uh, bridge pin spacings and sizes. And so he was able to just slide this one on, and it works great. S strings slide back and forth uh, with the bends. And also, I was incorrect that you cannot pull up. Uh, the only reason it was decked was there was no uh, strings in it yet, so there was no tension going this way. And so you notice if you kind of get down here, you, it does have a little bit of play where you can pull the strings up. It's not a lot, but it's enough that you can you know, replicate string bends if you needed to. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm mostly going to be using it for going down you know, a half tone or so. I don't really do dive bombs, but it's it's nice to just kind of like do some little, um, you know, manual tremolos as opposed to using a tremolo pedal or something. Um, and so for that, it, it should be great where I can go up and down just a little bit uh, to kind of give you that warble effect. Uh, one thing I did notice also to kind of mention, this thing is rock solid. I, I, I like it. And that one and a half inch, uh, I guess, leeway going forwards and backwards is really nice. I chose to put it back so that, because this, this arm is actually quite a bit longer than other tremolo arms, so I have it back a little ways. You can also pivot it though. Uh, so you can kind of pivot side to side when you loosen these two bolts up to kind of see if you want, you know, the arm to be more this way or this way. However, one thing to keep in mind is if you ever swing your arm back the other way, because it is so angled, uh, you will have an issue if you put it too low where this will hit the body of your guitar. Uh, and I didn't want to do that. So I basically set mine up this way. I put it backwards first, figured out how much room I was going to need back here for when I have it spun around. And this is mostly for like when it's in the case or something because it, it, it's a lower profile than when you have it up like this. Um, so spun it around back here, then locked the nuts in for the angle. And then that way when you spin it back around, it'll you know, be where you want it and it's not going to move around. It's It's tight. Uh, it's obviously it's only two Allen screws. So if you do want to take it out to put it in the case, if you know if you have a, a really low profile case where this won't fit, um, then you certainly can take it out. It doesn't take a whole lot of work to do that. Uh, but fortunately, uh, the old Les Paul case that came with this thing back in the uh, '90s when I got it uh, does have just enough headroom at the top uh, in the foam that this fits when I have the the bar turned around backwards. So that's kind of nice. So uh, that's it. I'll do a, a short little demo. I'm not going to you know, do like full songs or anything, but I'll just kind of do enough to just show you how much of a warble effect you can get going down and up. Um, and then I think that'll be the end of the video. All right. I'll cut to the next portion here. 
we'll just do a real short and unscientific uh, test here because that's the way I do everything. Uh, so just going to see how close to staying in tune it's going to be. I don't expect much. I mean, no trim really stays in tune, especially on a last ball. But let's just see uh, what we've got. So not bad, um, not perfect. Um, it's, it's pretty smooth, I have to say. The spring is pretty strong, especially for such a small uh, trim. I mean, a Bigsby you know, has a lot more mass, a lot more stability. Uh, I was expecting this to have a lot more play. It, it's pretty solid uh, and smooth. It doesn't have like a lot of jitters, although I do feel like a slight little click at, at one spot uh, which I think is kind of, there's a little uh, hinge right in here. I think that's what that is. I may try oiling that a little bit. But overall, not bad. I, I definitely recommend having the roller bridge. I can kind of feel how this, the strings might pinch a little bit, uh, especially if you do this on a Les Paul. If, you did it on a, if you're using something like this on a Tele or something, it may not be as, as critical. But on a Les Paul where the, the strings kind of go through at an angle, uh, they sometimes have a tendency to get pinched. Uh, so I think the roller bridge really helps. I also think some flat wound or uh, half round strings uh, might have a tendency to, to slide a little bit easier as well. So lots of different things you can do to probably help. But all in all, it's not really going out of tune that much. I mean, that sounds pretty good. Now, uh, let's check clean. Um, Yeah, I think with clean you can notice it a little bit more. It's it's maybe off, not I would say like a half step, maybe a quarter a step or something like that. You can just tell it's not quite as in tune as it was when I first started. Uh, but when you've got the higher gain on, uh, you don't really notice it as much. It gain tends to cover a lot of it up. So uh, you can still hear it a little bit, but not terrible. I mean, every guitar I have, with the exception of maybe the PRS. Uh, their trim system just seems to be really solid, but almost every other guitar I have with the trim, even my Fender with the the Ultra Deluxe, the up, the upgraded trim system, still has a tendency to go out of tune once in a while, uh, and you have to kind of fine tune with it, especially when it's new strings. You got to wait for the strings to kind of stretch out, and these are pretty new strings that I just put on here since I just um, restrung it after putting the trim on. So some of that is to be expected. But all in all, not too bad. Um, if this was the only Les Paul I had, I don't think I would do it. I think I would keep the hardtail just because I think staying in tune is more important. And you could always use something like an expression pedal with a pedal bend or something to, to do a similar effect. But since I already have a Gibson Les Paul with a hardtail, I think it's kind of nice to be able to have another Les Paul with the option of the trim and not having to completely re- uh, alter my guitar by putting a, a Bigsby or something that's a lot bulkier on it. And this one being pretty low profile too, when you have the trim back, uh, it can just about fit in a, in a case without having to remove the arm, uh, which is also really nice. So yeah, I mean, all in all for the price, I think it's a great option. Um, it does get a little pricey if you start getting the roller bridge and, you know, I think locking tuners would help if you don't have locking tuners on your guitar. So it, it starts adding up. But if all you need is just the trim, I really like this Duesenberg um, model better than, than some of the other ones that I've seen out there. So um, hope that helps. Uh, sorry for the lack of videos lately. I've been struggling with some medical issues. It sucks getting old. Uh, got some nerve damage in my left hand, which has made it almost impossible to play at all. 
uh, which really sucks since I just learned, just started learning how to play guitar, you know, a year and a half ago or something like that. And uh, I feel like I'm starting all over again because I haven't been able to play for so long and haven't been able to practice. So uh, it sucks and not getting videos out. And I've promised a bunch of people a lot of different videos that I'm going to make at some point in time on like the Revolt, the Tonex, um, some of the different Synergy amp modules that I've got, uh, some of the different guitars, the different pickup combinations. I've got like a list of dozens of videos that I've been meaning to make, and they've all just been sitting on the shelf waiting until I can actually start playing again. So hopefully, as I'm starting to get feeling back in my hand again a little bit, it's still a little bit tingly and numb, but as I'm starting to get feeling back in, I, I hopefully I'll be able to make some more videos. So thanks guys for watching. Um, hope you guys have a great week, and we will see you next time.